Back in college, my junior year, we lived in a suite on campus. There were four dorm rooms in the suite. Half of my friends were in this suite as well, and we all shared a common room in a small kitchenette. Our friend Cody, who was originally in the suite with us, ended up moving off campus to an apartment with his friends, so the school automatically assigned us a replacement. Unfortunately, it was this kid named Rodney. He seemed normal enough. He had blonde short hair and a patchy like beard almost non-existent eyebrows and he was really tall medium build but he was like 6'4 he was in the far corner of the suite next to my room we each had our own room so there was four of us in the suite rodney seemed to keep to himself for the first few days until one day i came back from class and he was sitting in the living room he said he had to tell me something and then told me he had parasomonia which was the reason he was transferred from his previous dorm I didn't know what that was until he explained that it's a sleep disorder that may cause him to talk or yell in his sleep due to night terrors and he just wanted everyone in the suite to be aware of it but to tell you the truth that being the first real conversation I had with the guy made me more uncomfortable than anything I was hoping for. I'd get to know him on a more personal level not find out he has a sleeping disorder. I also didn't entirely get why he thought it was necessary to tell me that. I texted in the dorm group chat we made with Cody still in it if Rodney had told them as well about his sleeping disorder yet they all said no and followed with a laughter and confusion when my other two sweet mates got back later we hung out in the common room and discussed why we thought rodney's sleeping disorder could have been the reason for him to be transferred from his previous dorm then rodney walked in and right past us after giving us a slight sup he went to his room and shut the door we had the tv on loud so we whispered amongst ourselves about him that night i heard a knock on my door in the middle of the night i asked who was it no reply. I ignored it and I thought to myself, what if it was Rodney? The next day I asked my friends if either of them knocked on my door last night and they both texted me saying no. Cody was having a great laugh from all of this. I was already freaked out and I was hoping this wouldn't be a regular thing because it was disturbing already. A few nights later it got worse. It was the middle of the night. I had already woken up, checked my phone and saw 2am. I heard footsteps outside in the hallway of the common area and again a knock on my door. I didn't answer this time. I knew it was Rodney and he was starting to freak me out. He clearly was a heavy sleepwalker. I texted the group chat again, right then and there. It just happened again. They didn't respond until morning time, saying that they didn't hear anything or it must have been because Rodney's room was right next to mine. That day I knocked on Rodney's door and asked him if he had been knocking on my door in the middle of the night. He told me he had no recollection of doing that but apologised because he didn't mention the part of his disorder as sleepwalking. He told me it was completely harmless and not to worry but I didn't exactly view it as completely harmless. If it was waking me up in the middle of the night freaking me out. A certain amount of time passed that I can't remember, probably less than 4 days. There hadn't been any other random middle of the night knocks on the door which I was happy about but this story wouldn't be told if something didn't happen. I woke up to the noise in my room. I looked around the dark room and spotted Rodney in the corner of the room, facing the wall, muttering to himself. I said Rodney's name and he turned in my direction and kept saying open the door, open the door. I was genuinely disturbed. He looked in my direction, but it didn't seem like he was looking at me, rather through me. I saw a smile on his face and I heard what seemed to be a small laugh as he walked out of the room and out of my view. I didn't know if I was supposed to wake him up or not. I know nothing about sleepwalking and sleep disorders. There was silence now. I grabbed my phone and was about to text my friends but I was interrupted by this immense loud banging on a door outside in company with Rodney's voice screaming open the door. He was screaming it like a maniacal madman. I ran to the common area and saw him at the opposite end of the hall thrashing his fists on one of our sweet mates door. I ran to Rodney and started shaking him to wake up. My two friends came out of the room to the commotion as well and we all started to shake Rodney until he stopped, looked at all three of us and with a blank look on his face said I'm sorry guys and walked to his room and shut the door. The three of us stood there in shock not even knowing what to say or to do. The neighbouring room must have called the campus police because they showed up at our door. We had to tell them the truth. Rodney spoke with them for a while then he went back to his room. I made sure not to leave my room unlocked again that night. The next day Rodney was gone without a trace of him ever being there. Like I said, I know nothing about sleepwalking or any of that stuff, but that didn't look like sleepwalking to me. I don't know what that was or is currently going on in that guy's head, but he needs to get help.
I got along fine with my college roommate Stacy. She was a messy one sometimes, but other than that, we had no other problems. We lend each other stuff all the time at our school. We had bunk beds, which I kind of think are unusual in college dorms. I was on the top bunk because I was a lighter sleeper, and Stacy was always constantly getting up in the middle of the night, so she'd definitely be waking me up if I was on the bottom. There was this one night that still sticks with me to this day, only because I don't really know how to logically explain it. Stacy and I were in our room studying. I was at my desk desk and she was in her bed. I had a big presentation the next day for one of my classes, so I was just going over my talking points again. In fact, I practiced them to Stacy a few times and she acted as my audience, then asking questions afterwards. She told me I could borrow one of her tops tomorrow if I need to for my presentation, as I didn't have any nice formal kinds of tops with me at school. After helping me review, she went back to her studying for a little more, then she went to sleep. I wasn't done studying, but as a courtesy, I turned my desk lamp off and went up to my bunk and kept studying there on my laptop. Stacey Stacy would snore sometimes, so when she started snoring, I knew she was asleep. I continued my studying and rehearsing for another half an hour to an hour before closing my laptop screen. I woke up at like 5am when the lights were just barely starting to creep into the almost pitch black room. Through the windows, I heard Stacy down below me walking around. I groggily said Stacy's name and she answered with a mm-hmm. I asked her if I could still borrow a nice top to wear for my presentation later that day. She went mm-hmm again and I heard her open a closet door. I looked down at her and saw her bend over in the closet then she got out and waved at me the sound of the door closing snapped me out of my days just a little bit more i remember grabbing my phone to check the time and just naturally checked for my notifications it was around 5 a.m i wondered where stacy could be going most likely the bathroom like she often would in the middle of the night the waving was just a bit unusual though but then i heard a snore from below me in the lower bunk at first i thought i imagined it like how can that be possible i peered my head over the edge of the top bunk and there was stacy under the sheets did i dream seeing stacy in a closet no, because I looked at the closet door and it was still open. I quickly hurried to the door to the room and went out to look into the hallway. On both sides there wasn't a soul in sight, but it had been at least five minutes since I heard the door shut. I shook Stacy awake and I told her someone was just in our room. It took a few moments for her to fully wake up and snap to reality, which she then showed a major concern for it and rushed to check her closet for anything stolen. Nothing was stolen though. I still to this day don't know who that was or how she got in. I reported it to the university police. But their investigation and review of the camera in the lobby of the building turned up nothing, but I don't know for a fact if it wasn't a hallucination or a dream.